up, baby? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking. All right, y'all. Welcome back to another video. Here we are talking about the Pete. Some people are excited about this build, some people are not. This is definitely a long-term kind of like uh, side project build. We're going to be working on the race cars, doing all that stuff, working on the race cars all last night, which you guys will see in the upcoming videos. Uh, we still got a bunch of racing going on, but the end goal for this thing is to have a badass race car hauler, or if it's something we want to use for storm work, just to haul some equipment, we can. Uh, the reason why I got this is because there's nothing cooler than pulling to the racetrack with a 53 foot trailer in a badass truck. And honestly, I've only seen it a handful of times. I've, like maybe like- The big races. Yes, yeah, so like maybe three times in my entire life have I like walked through the pits. You'll see a nice toter, you'll see a nice rig, but only three times in my entire life, I can literally be like, damn, that's a badass truck hauling that badass race trailer. So that's the reason why I got it. I've always wanted to repeat, but that uh, some people are like, why are you buying a truck? That is why I am, uh, well, why I have bought this truck. Obviously it's a project. We have been putting some thought to it, talking to some people in the industry, talking to people that have trucks, uh, trying to get a, a good understanding of what, like, I guess I want in my mind and what it will actually be in reality and how functional it will be. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's a long, long, long road ahead, but I feel like, I feel like we can do it. I mean, if we can build a car to go, you know, sub one second in the 60 foot, I feel like we can put a truck together. Not not down in anyone that's doing the truck stuff, but from what it looks like, it's like a race car, but everything's just bigger. I mean, it's pretty accessible and easy to work on. It's built to be worked on, and it's just nuts and bolts at this point. So uh, we got Mason here, our liaison of big truck stuff. Make it TV. Yeah, make it till you make it. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about it. Some people in the comments, they've been saying, oh, that's a that's a, a 378, that's a this, that's a that. Uh, the truck is a 379, right? Short nose. Everyone's like, oh, if that ain't a long nose, you can go straight to hell. And I'm like, okay, like, what's the big deal? Eight inches, okay? I know that's life-changing for some people, but I mean, eight more inches, I wouldn't be able to do shit. I wouldn't be able to walk, so. <laughs> I don't need the extra eight inches. Whether it's it's long nose or, or short nose, it still is a 379. Uh, I've done some research and you can tell the difference between a 379 and a 389 by how the mirrors mount. The 389s, uh, which is, the 389's a bigger truck, is it not? Yeah, 389's longer than a 379 long nose. Long nose. So uh, the 389 has the mirrors that mount to the A pillar, 379 has the mirrors that mount to the door. So that's like a telltale sign for, just from my research. Hmm. Um, they made this truck with a short nose, like it is now, or the 379 extended nose. That's the one that's eight inches longer. Um, I think the cab sits back eight inches is really the difference on it. So we're not going to do all of that. They make some conversions for these. What do they call them? The little big hoods or something? Yeah. Where it's just... Here, come, come, come. So you said the cab's the, the longer part. So the, is the hood the exact same length? They just the add the eight inches? The, the cabs the are the cab. same. The cab is back eight inches from, from my research. Uh, the hood is eight inches longer okay. here. So gotcha. you'll see like a lot of the side profiles will have more meat behind the fender. Gotcha. Uh, where this one, it's like the fender's kind of like pretty much at the end of the hood. Um, but they sell some conversions where the, this is really the short nose just slants down. They sell conversions that sell this top piece for both sides that goes straight out. So it kind of looks like a long nose. It gives you that like more, I think it's like a more of a gangster, more badass yeah, look. Kind of boxy. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, opposed to having it slant down. Um, but I, I still think this looks good, but the plan is we'll put that on there. Um, it needs new fenders. Needs We're, we're going to completely redo everything. So the hood, the side parts of the hood are going to stay. Top's gonna change. The cab's gonna stay. We need a new door. Uh, the the goal with this thing is I talked to some people that have multiple trucks at multiple different lengths. Um, some have sleepers. Some are day cabs. With what we want to do with it, like if we're gonna go down and race in Florida, obviously we want to have something a little bit more than a day cab because we're gonna ride in the truck for you know seven to nine hours. Um, maybe have a third person in there, like be like chilling on the bed or something. We're not gonna have amenities as far as a, a toilet or a sink in here it's going to be a truck so if we go anywhere like we have a prevost bus we'll probably take the prevost bus as well and it would be the 53 foot or one of the motor ultimate owls. combo right there that would be tough the that. only downside is the prevost is going to shower well we, we can hey but we have shower trailers yeah well we can we can work around it we, we can work around we'll it. pull a shower yeah. we'll have a whole compound set up 
the previous pre-off pre sleeps like 14. Yeah, it so does. It, it, it's a solid compound. It ra rides like a minivan. But, <laughs> um, I would like to do like a 36 to 48 inch sleeper on it, which I feel like is pretty good. Uh, and I think they call them like the coffin style sleepers where okay. they're the same height as the cab. I don't want the sleeper to be taller than the cab. I just like the look. It's kind of like more like an old school look. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be looking at trucks all the time. I just think they look cool. So this is my vision. You guys that are experts in the industry, tell me if I'm way off or, or close. So um, the cab will obviously stay the same. We're gonna have like, I, I think ideally, I would like the 48 inch sleeper. It's a little bit bigger. Um, I wanna stretch the frame. I want to have 305 inch wheelbase. That's what I want wheelbase wise. Everyone just like 300 inch wheelbase is badass. Some guys go like 325, it looks way too long. Uh, I wanna do like 305 or 310 for the wheelbase. Uh, because I'm going with that little bit bigger sleeper, I'm, I'm okay with going just a hair over 300 inch uh, wheelbase, but it's gotta be like minimum, cannot be no shorter than 300 inch wheelbase. And how they measure the wheelbase on this is different. They go from the center of the front axle, like, right? well, like if you measure wheelbase on a car, to they go, Again, for my research, I did some quick research. They go to in between the drive axles, so it's not. Oh, here. so it's not to the rear. It's in between them, so it's it's going to be a big bitch. I mean, she's wow. going to be long as hell. Um, so that's the that's the goal is uh, forty eight inch coffin style sleeper, uh, three hundred or three hundred to three hundred ten inch wheelbase. I want to put the front on bags and then just you know make it gangster, like make this thing like nice fenders in the rear. Badass bumper, lights everywhere. Am I missing anything so far? Lots of chrome. Lots of chrome. <laughs> Lots of chrome. My man Ant is going to be the polisher. He's going to get so good at polishing, he's going to do it full time. Well, I mean, I want it long enough, so we need a lift bump. Yeah. Well, explain them with a lift bump for those that don't know. They have, I don't know if it's pneumatic or hydraulic. I don't know. I've it never probably actually, runs off of air. I would assume it's pneumatic. Yeah. But I've never actually seen one before, but I've seen videos. Yes. And the bumper, literally, it'll tip out lift up so you can get into place. Oh, I've seen somewhere the bumper just tip like straight up. Like, oh. Just so it's like, this thing is gangster low. And I don't understand how these truck drivers, like the guys that, that work these trucks that are like show quality trucks, how they don't just destroy the front bumper because it's just a giant piece of, <laughs> I mean, what is it, aluminum at that point? How does it stainless. not have stainless? How does it not have six million dents in it? Like these guys be pulling into truck shows and that shit is straight as glass. Uh, but it's badass. So that's what that's what I would like. We're gonna put some 24 and a half inch wheels. It ha actually has uh, some Alcoas on it now, but so this guy that painted them needs to be shot because you can't paint Alcoas. You just don't do it. Um, but the plan is we're gonna do uh, a complete like bare frame, cut it, stretch it. I talked to uh, <laughs> the Gentry and Sons trucking guys. They've done a number of stretches. He's like, if you need any help with it, just holler at me and get it knocked out. I've seen a bunch of people do it in like pictures of they're at their farm in the barn stretching the frame. So I feel like if they could do it, we got a good chance of successfully doing it. Um, the motor, the motor needs love. The motor needs love. This thing is hurt. The guy's like, oh, it needs an injector. <laughs> Probably some pistons, you know, what else? Some liners, needs a turbo. Needs a turbo. Um, we're just gonna do a complete overhaul. Whether we do like an in-frame or we take it out when we get the frame worked on, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's gonna get you know, the, the whole shebang, sleeves, pistons. Do, do you do rods? Does it do rods? Uh, I don't know. I would think so. They sell a whole kit. I, I imagine the crank stays and then you just put pistons, uh, rods in it, new cylinder head, injectors, new sleeves, uh, turbo, and then the Gentry and Sun guys are gonna tune it. They said uh, 60 series Detroit, new turbo, complete fresh rebuild they said it would make 700 horsepower with it and have it live forever he's made as much as 1300 with his wow he said i don't know if i recommend that and i'm not looking to like be working on this thing all the time so if we can make 700 horsepower race trailers are extremely light so that thing will be a hot rod also talking about uh changing the transmission from a 10 speed to a 13 speed when all this goes on so the transmission changes are a piece of cake but as far as everything else goes uh we have just a shell this is essentially like buying a roller and we're gonna have to start from scratch. You you want to have any input on this? I, I think you pretty much nailed it. Um, we're gonna redo everything, literally everything. And and we'll have like sporadic videos here and there. Uh, we're getting everything ready for FL2K right now, and um, obviously this thing's just gonna sit out here. 
winter time we're not racing a whole bunch in between storms it's gonna be something where we pull it in the shop and uh and just start tearing it down and and i imagine a lot of the parts we're not going to reuse we're going to reuse the cab and the parts of the the front end the hood and then everything else is going to be take off clean replace powder coat and, and go from there what's our color scheme color scheme that's a good point i was thinking again i'm open for opinions on this one i was thinking we painted the same color as my 450 that uh it's like that tricolor red and then chrome ruby red metallic yeah and then everything under the hood i want gold so like the turbo powder coated gold all the piping powder coated gold and then everything else what out color here do we do the, frame? the frame i think do you just keep it simple with the frame and paint it black i don't want a gold frame that's too much yeah, that axles? axles can be gold Gold axis. See, you kind of get in this like chrome and gold, like the super high polish and the gold. Like, is it contradicting at some point? I think too much of either. Yeah. I want so my 450. I blew the up pipe off of it, so I'm ordering these metal up pipes. So I'm getting them in gold powder coat. So I think it'd be cool to have like you pop the hood on that. Everything's all gold. It's a same color Maybe. red with big chrome wheels. Maybe big... we should put American forces on this. Out the budget. Out the budget. We're trying to keep this in a budget. The whole, we're trying to save money by doing it all in house. That's the thing. So I feel like just like everything else, though. We save enough money doing it all ourselves. We can afford it. Yeah. Forces. Maybe. I like that. Long term. Do they make American Forces for big trucks? <laughs> they do. They will. They will. They have. Just send some links, Mason. Yeah. I mean, there's like I honestly I would like some Peterbilts, like the classic. They're very expensive as well, but just like the OG Peterbilt wheels. Yeah. I got the Freightliner Classics on my red Dodge. I got the Alcoa's on my blue Dodge. This is a Pete. It probably should have, you know, the Pete wheels on it. So that's, I think, the game plan. We got to figure out the color scheme. Uh, definitely, I want to, like, powder coat the axles on it. Try, try to make it nice. We'll take our time, like, three years down the road. Put it together and, you know, then it's it's badass. You know, something that you can kind of like, keep forever and use. So. I think the most badass thing would be whenever we go to redo the engine stuff. It's... We built race cars, so we can do all of that and badass stuff. Yeah. Like nice charge pipes, and yeah. exhaust. And I was looking at it uh, yesterday when it was running, and they have like these big silicone couplers on there, and everything has so much movement. Like, so much movement. Well, do you think it needs a little bit of movement? Though? Oh, totally. Yeah, you could not make that. Record. I was gonna say it's yeah. not like the it's not like the the intercoolers mounted to the motor. The intercoolers mounted exactly. to the frame, and the motors over here flopping. So yeah, there's definitely some movement, but we could. I mean, we'll make it nice. I'm excited to learn this. I don't know this 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 stuff, so I think it's gonna be really fun. But I'm I'm also excited. A lot of people in the comments, a lot of people that watch these videos, are truck drivers, are in the trucking industry, and it's really cool to get your input on it. I know a lot of guys, you know, they're driving, they, they got the log books, they have to rest, and you know, then they're watching some YouTube videos. So I'm open for input. A couple of comments that they're like, hey, I got a 310 inch wheelbase truck, let me swing by the shop. We are more than welcome to anyone that drives a big ass, badass truck to stop by and we'll check it out. We'll probably put it on video, get some ideas off of it. I mean, if your wheelbase doesn't start with a three, yeah, don't on. don't come in the parking lot unless your wheelbase is a three something. If we'll you're bust the tape measure out. Two ninety five. Just keep on driving. So that's it. If you have three hundred plus wheelbase, you're more than welcome to stop in and hang out. So that's our plan. Um, I'm excited about it, and uh, I hope you guys are excited about it too. So this is our. 379 short nose everyone's got the long nose the extended hood this is our 379 short nose build so a pretty cool video getting out of the lot that it was in it looks i think a whole lot better what do you think oh, it's way better it like it cleaned up like decent yeah it definitely did so I, i'm good with it i mean it, it needs some love here and there but what doesn't all right so i didn't want to just make the video just talking not showing you guys anything we didn't really like show the truck too too much before so we'll just kind of like walk over everything and show you guys what we got um i mean it's just a big ass old truck at this point so probably powder coat the rear ends take them all apart literally just take everything apart i don't know how this stuff all works but i imagine it's just like a big rear end like what i'm used to doing so we'll take it all apart and just inspect everything make sure everything looks good um fuel tank this thing's beat up we're not going to use the fuel tank also uh, we're not going to run the truck anymore because there's been water in it so that's not ideal um stacks these will be for sale if someone's interested in these they're really not in bad shape so if someone wants those they're they're miter cut 
I'm going to do like some flat ones, but uh, that'll be for sale. I mean, anything that you guys are interested in that, I mean, these seats, they're going to go. The interior, kind of rough. Um, those glasses, definitely for sale. You know, someone was just putting miles behind them. They're just eating the road with those on. Uh, but the dash, we're going to do like a whole new, whole new everything. Yeah, I mean, it just, the condition is exactly what you'd expect. I still feel like I got an absolutely amazing deal. Everyone that I've spoken to, in the trucking industry said I completely stole it for that price. Uh, one thing that I was advised to do is sell the transmission out of it and put a 13 speed in it. So I'm gonna listen to the professionals. If that's what they recommend, that's probably what we'll do. So once we take the cab off and do all that stuff, we'll probably pull, I'm probably gonna pull everything, take the motor out of it as well. And um, we'll sell the transmission. I guess they, they said, they say, I'm going off big, they say, they're like, that's like me saying it's, oh yeah, it's easy to build a four second street car. In all reality, it's really not that easy. I just do it all the time. So, and I've done it before. So I have experience there for it makes it easy. But yeah, I mean, I, nothing really like jumps out as like a major structural concern. There is this right here, which is where like this pan hard bar, which I believe centers the rear end. I think that's what it is. Uh, it kind of ripped the frame, but I assume on stuff like this, it's just like big equipment where you just put it back and weld it on up and then you're good to go. I mean, you got to think when you stretch the frame, I'm pretty sure you, you cut it and then just put more frame in there. You can see where it's kind of ripped it a little bit. So yeah, it's gets gross. I mean, it's going to be a lot of work, but it's, it's definitely exciting. You guys that know this stuff a little better. Also, like there's some stuff here, like the exhaust hanger is a ratchet strap i mean technically speaking getting the job done is it ideal i would say not this transmission cooler oil cooler i'm not sure looks like it was smushing between someone's ass cheeks so i'm i'm gonna be most excited when we're just taking everything apart i think that's gonna be fun the exhaust also right there not ideal i do not believe that's ideal yeah so Everything here is just, uh, the engine itself, very clean though. Like we just power washed, everything was good with it. So yeah, yeah, ha hopefully have some stuff that you could sell off here. I'm, I'm sure someone wouldn't mind this fuel tank, you know, post some stuff up for sale and see where it goes. And I think once you strip it down, we'll have a nice canvas. Didn't come with a, uh, the fifth wheel, which I've been looking at. They're quite expensive. I, I think everything on the big trucks is expensive in the the scheme of things compared to buying stuff for like a three quarter ton truck. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright, let's go wrap it up guys. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Please comment down below. I want your input on what we need to do with this thing.